All right, welcome to episode 16 of Box Score Sports. I'm Minnie. I'm Ski. As you can see, Gavo and Birch are not with us right now. They're out on a senior trip, but yep. we got a good interview coming. We got Gopher Legend, got European League star Trevor Mabakwe coming in. It's going to be a really good interview. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Before we get into that interview, we got a big announcement to make. I mean, with school ending and Gavin and Birch being seniors, Chapter 1 is going to be closing. We're going to get into Chapter 2 with two new guests. Boys? We got Tate the Cook and Toby Sabula joining the podcast for next year. It's going to be a lot of fun. They were in with the interview with Trevor and... It was a good interview, don't you think, guys? Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of fun. But, I mean, we ain't got much time. Let's get right into it. What do you say? Let's go. Let's, Let's go. get it. All right. All righty. We are now joined by a former Golden Gopher and pro basketball player, current basketball coach Trevor Mbakwe. Thank you for coming and joining us. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's yep. been a little bit in the making, and we finally got it to work out. So <laughs> I'm excited for it. Yeah, me too. All righty, we'll just get right into questions. I mean, growing up, what was it like uh, to get to the D1 level for basketball? Uh, I was fortunate. You know, obviously there's a lot of athletes. Not everyone has an opportunity to play D1 or go high D1. Uh, I've received my first scholarship my sophomore year in high school. Went into my freshman year by Marquette University. I had a few offers my freshman year. It kind of paved the way of the rest of my high school career. Uh, but it was fun. It was a great experience. Uh, I started I started my college my collegiate career at uh, Marquette University, and then I'm transferring to come back home to University of Minnesota to play for Tubby Smith, a uh, future Hall of Famer. And it was a great experience. It was fun playing in front of my fa uh, family and friends, and uh, so it was something I'm definitely proud to do. For sure. So, what was like the recruiting process for you? Like, was it hard? Was it stressful? Oh, it was really stressful. Uh, you know, every day as a high school kid, you know, your, your mind changes every day. You think that's probably one of the yeah. biggest decisions you make. Uh, are you guys seniors or what, what grade are you guys? Uh, juniors. Juniors and a sophomore. sophomore. Yeah. So do you guys uh, – so for me, it was, it was tough. You know, you're talking to college coaches nonstop. Back then, they can text you all the time. So, like, I'm in school texting with college coaches. And, you know, it's a big decision where you're going to spend the next four years of your career. Uh, I went back and forth a lot. I was all over the place. One day I wanted to be in the South. One day I wanted to be on the West Coast. <laughs> One day I wanted to stay home. So uh, it took me a while, but when I finally made my decision, it was probably one of the best moments because I felt the relief and I, I felt really good about where I was going. For sure. What sports did you all play in high school? Well, football was my first love, but I gave it up uh, prior to my freshman year in high school, uh, just knew I couldn't do both. I'm a big guy. I have a lot of parts to hit. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, I just remember watching a college football game. A guy got hit in his knee. I'm Willis McGahee. Are you guys familiar with him? Yep. Yeah. yeah he, that's what in the national championship game, you know, he got knee and his knee kind of popped out. And I was like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, in high school, I mostly I, I just played basketball 24-7. That was my sport. If I can go back, I wish I would have probably played football or maybe did some track, uh, be a multi-sport athlete. But uh, football, was my, that was my main job. So transitioning from high school sports to college sports, what was the biggest like um, transition or the hardest thing to do? You're just on a schedule, just nonstop. You know, your whole day, is, your week's planned out for you. Uh, it goes from high school is fun to like now college, you're playing against, you know, 21 year olds, 22 year olds who are, you know, getting ready for that next level. Uh, it's going to school nonstop. We were practicing at five o'clock in the morning every day. So that was a hard adjustment. Then you go from practicing to you got your classes for the rest of the day. Then you got, you know, you have an hour to nap and then you have to be a student again. So I think just managing your time, getting used to the, the daily uh, grind of being a collegiate athlete. Gotcha. All righty. What was the day in the life of a men's for like being like a D1 basketball player? <laughs> Uh, so we practice five o'clock in the morning every day. So we practice from like five to seven. Then from like, you have like an hour maybe for your first class. Then you have a few hours of your classes. Then you have to come back for study hall. And then usually like preseason, we'll have two practices. So then we have another practice that afternoon. So it's pretty, it's pretty busy. Uh, you definitely earn your stripes there, but, uh, but later in my uh, collegiate career practice became a little bit lighter, but you know, at first you're, you're a student, then you're an athlete. But you, you don't have much time to yourself, but uh, it's worth it, you know, long term. Mm -hmm. 
Well, uh, what was your dream college growing up? What college do you look up to? Or uh, uh, my dream college is probably UCLA. UCLA, uh, yeah. UCLA. Uh, I never received an offer for them. Arizona was up there too. They were one of my top teams, uh, but at the time they went through a coaching change. But also being home, I think being a Gopher was always like one of my top things. You know, being able to play in front of my family and friends, and you know, growing up being a Gopher fan myself. But if I had to pick a school, my dream school would probably be UCLA. Yeah, I like that school. Yeah. When you were playing, how about you guys? Can I answer your question. What's yeah. your dream school? Oh, uh, that's <laughs> I don't know. Somewhere down south. Got to go to Harvard. <laughs> Harvard. Yeah. No I'm joking. I'd never make it there. <laughs> Me either. Um, I don't know. I like I yeah. like watching the Gophers a lot. Yeah, Gophers. I'm I'm I like watching all their sports. Somewhere in the Big Ten. Yeah, I want to yeah. go where it's warm. Yeah. So like Florida, Miami. Yeah, somewhere down south. Okay. All right. While you were playing in the Big Ten, what team did you want to beat the most? Uh, Wisconsin. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. A lot of a lot of friends who end up going there from Minnesota, and obviously that was that was my biggest them in Iowa. I love playing against them. Those rivalry games give you bragging rights for the year. So, mm-hmm. but Wisconsin one A, Iowa one B. Those always. are always those are always packed houses. I bet. Yeah, it's always fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What was the biggest difference playing in high school to college ball and even pro ball? Uh, just the speed of the game, the physicality. Uh, you know, high school. You know, there's you know days I you know being six seven six eight I go I might play against somebody who's like six one six two so I, obviously there's a clear advantage but in college you're playing against bigger stronger guys who are quicker smarter so it's always like that quick adjustment and as you get you know as you get further into your playing days it you know gets harder you know guys become quicker you're not always going to be the strongest guy on the court or the fastest or jump the highest and it's always finding different ways to adapt and be able to compete at a high level. Sure. So in your first season, when you were at the Gopher, you you averaged ten rebounds a game. I mean, like, I mean, when you transition into the Big Ten, how can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was like just one of the things I always just loved doing. I just like one of the hardest parts of the game is uh, to me, it's like your will, your determination to be able to do that. Obviously, I was always an undersized guy, so I think that always made it uh, more of a challenge for me. But that was something I always kind of prided myself on doing. Uh, I met with Flip Saunders, rest in peace. Uh, my sophomore year in high school, and he was coaching with the Pistons at the time, and he was coaching like Ben Wallace and a couple other guys who were kind of like similar type of players to me, and he kind of just gave me like, you know, everyone has at that level is great at something, and like, you know, not everyone's going to be Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan, LeBron James. It's like mm-hmm. kind of finding your niche in that sport and being great at it, and that was one thing that I kind of just took upon myself to, you know, I always wanted to be considered one of the best rebounders in the country, and I was able to do that a few, a few of my years at the University of Minnesota. How did it feel being nominated third team All Big Ten by the coaches and second team All Big Ten by the media as a senior? Uh, it felt great. Um, I was All Big Ten twice uh, during my period of time, and it's something I always kind of forget about until I go to Williams Arena and they have my picture up with my uh, All Big Team nominations. But it, it felt great, you know, as an individual. We all kind of want to have that success as an individual along mm-hmm. with our team goals. So I think just being rewarded by the media and the coaches show like, you know, all the hard work that I put in kind of gave me that, you know, sense of assurance and uh, about what I was doing on the basketball court. Yeah. All right. So moving into be or moving into a little bit of coaching, what's your favorite thing about being a coach? Uh. I think just seeing the joy in our players. I think just me picture myself as a high school kid. Uh, I don't have the success that I have had uh, getting here if I didn't have the right coaches and people, my, you know, mentors and male figures in my life to kind of push me to to achieve my goals. So I think for me, it's just kind of be able to give back, give back to our student athletes and kind of give them, hopefully be able to inspire them to kind of do the same and have the same success uh, throughout their you know life. Would you ever want to coach at a higher level? Uh, potentially, maybe down the road. Like I spent a lot of my time already traveling and being away from my family and friends. But down the road, uh, I could see myself maybe going D1, D2, D3, uh, just going to get into the next level. But right now, I'm happy with high school kids. I like working with you all, even though you guys are stressful at times. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. 
but it's been fun. Like my first year coaching here, it was a great, we made the state tournament. Uh, we had an unbelievable year. We weren't really predicted to make it to state. So just seeing our, some of the battles our guys went through and like the success they had towards the end of the season, that was, that was really special to me. Sure. Would you coach any other sport? Yeah. Baseball, baseball, and wrestling. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, right now I'll probably stick with uh, with basketball, but you know who knows down the road. Gotcha. Did you have any mentors growing up? Who did you look up to? Uh, yeah, my high school coach. He was a he's a AD at Lakeville South. He kind of pushed me to. I was with him every day. He always kind of pushed me. Never let me get too lazy or too uh, complacent from where I was as a as an athlete, as a student athlete. Uh, obviously, I looked up to my mom, my older brother. Those and those, those were my biggest inspirations. And growing up as a, my celebrity mentor was Kevin Garnett. Like I just loved watching him play. I loved everything about him, and like that, I wore number twenty one for him. And he was like who I aspired to be. Obviously, I didn't come close to be <laughs> anything like him. <laughs> but he he pushed me without him even knowing. What would you tell younger kids that look up to you? Um. Just always believe in yourself. Um, don't listen to the outside noise too much. Uh, kind of stay balanced, you know, never get too high, never get too low. That was kind of the uh, advice I got from Coach Smith. He used to always say that, like, one day you might be, you know, might hit five home runs and you might go two weeks without hit, having one hit. So, like, you know, it's kind of just stay on that same wavelength, uh, believing yourself and, you know, just knocking out the outside noise and, you know, negative criticism that really can't help you that much. For sure. Right. Going back on things, how was it playing overseas, like playing basketball overseas? Uh, overseas was fun. It was great. Uh, I had a chance to travel the world. I played all over the place, Japan, Russia, uh, Israel, Italy, Germany. So I had a chance to see a lot of different cultures, meet a lot of different people. Uh, the game there is a little bit uh, – it's it's rowdy. I'm <laughs> yeah. uh, I remember my first game, I saw one of our fans get beat up by like four different guys from an opposing fans, and it's like it was like – that first guy, I was like, I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> it's uh, so, but it, it's fun. It was, it was a great experience. My, me and my family were there for seven years, and uh, I definitely missed being over there. And but I feel fortunate that I was able to play at a high level in Europe for uh, that amount of time. Right, right. How much different is it? Like with the like how you said the culture. Like when you go and you like can't like for some of the languages you can't speak, or and stuff like that. Like how do you do that? Uh, it's challenging. You you have to adapt. Like you know, a lot of Google Translate on both oh, ends. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's kind of I kind of usually pick teams uh, that were in bigger cities that had a lot of tourists and like kind of like English was like a common language to some extent. So, but there's definitely challenges. Like Russia was really difficult. Uh, but usually you have like a translator. You have a few players on the team who are used to being with Americans who speak English. And like, you know, it's not, it's kind of broken English half the time, but mm -hmm. uh, it's enough to get you by. At the end of the day, I think basketball is, is a common language. You know, when a screen's yeah. coming, you know <laughs> what you have to do. So that usually helped out. What was your favorite level of basketball you played at? High school, pro, or college? Probably pro. Uh, or no, sorry, probably college. College, uh, that was a great, you know, being with my friends for four years, we still hang out. We still really close. We play spike ball. We, you know, we're at each other's uh, friends, uh, kids' birthday parties. But I'll say college. It was a great time. Uh, it's your first time away from home. You don't have your parents. You know, you're kind of like fitting for yourself. But you have your teammates who uh, were my family for those four years. And so I'll probably say uh, my college experience was my best experience as an athlete. Right. What did what did your day look like as a pro player? Sorry, you, you you cut out. Sorry. Oh, about that. well, what did your day look like as a pro player, from start to finish? Uh, usually, you have a lot more freedom. Obviously, you know, obviously, you're not going to classes. You don't have that aspect of it. So, usually, uh, depending on what part of the season we're in, you have your two a days. So you might go in the morning, have a workout individual, do some weight training, then come back in the afternoon. You have another practice. If it's a week we have a lot of games, it's like, you know, you might have a quick hour and a half practice and then you have your games going on. So it just kind of fluctuated. You definitely have more time than you did in college. <laughs> yeah. um, so, but that's, which was nice because, you know, at the end of the day, you're just a professional athlete. You know, your whole, your whole job is just to make sure that you're in the best shape, you're in the best you know, space mentally um, to perform in those games. Sure. 
I don't know. Do we have anything else? Any yeah, other questions, questions to ask? Uh, oh. I don't think so. We're all good? All righty. Well, thank you very much for joining us. This was a lot of fun. That yeah, was a good podcast. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. How many podcasts have you guys done? Um, I like think this is 15, 16. 15 or 16th one. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah, we've been, well, I'm happy. Yeah, we've been fortunate. Yep. We've been fortunate. Well, yeah, I appreciate you guys thinking about me. Uh, thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. This is oh, yeah. definitely a fan of the show now. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> All righty. Well, I think that sums it up. Yep. We'll see you guys next time. Yep. Yep. See ya.